In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get up and running with OBS Studio in five easy steps, just in case you don't have time to watch a master course from some nerd like me. I'm Meeples Vox, your stream professor, and obviously the first step you need to do is simply to download OBS, of course. You've done that, right? Download OBS Studio, install it, and run it so we can get up and going. The next step is to run the auto configuration wizard. This may have popped up automatically when you first opened OBS Studio. If not, you can go to tools, auto configuration wizard, click that. Then you can specify whether you're optimizing for streaming or and recording is just kind of secondary or if you're primarily recording and not streaming. In this case, we're going to choose optimize for streaming. Hit next. It's going to determine what resolution or frame rate you want to use. 1920 by 1080s, usually the average frame rate, 30 or 60, prefer 30 when possible or 60 or 30, but prefer higher resolution when possible. We're going to say we want a more fluid frame rate because we're doing a game stream, but the prefer high resolution option may be something you want to do. If, for example, you're doing a uh, just a webcam stream or a coding stream or an art stream, something where you have a lot of detail you want to show, you may prefer to have higher resolution rather than a higher frame rate. And this is the option available to you for that. But we're going to say 60 or 30, but prefer 60 when possible. Click next. Choose which plas platform you wish to stream to and connect your account. In this case, we are streaming to Twitch. We need to connect our account. You can alternatively use a stream key, but that's an outdated way of doing things. Why would you do it that way? So log into Twitch or Mixer or whatever platform you're using. All right. This gives you a couple more options. Prefer hardware encoding, which would utilize your graphics card or integrated graphics card in order to encode the video instead of your processor. This is a lot more efficient, but in some cases can lower quality. If you're on an NVIDIA 20 series or higher graphics card, or you're on a 1650 super or higher graphics card, you've got a really good graphics card encoder. It competes with what you can probably run on your processor. You're good to leave that checked. If you're on an AMD graphics card or only an Intel iGPU, you'll have to play with this and watch my other videos on whether or not it's worth it generally i'm going to say performance wise if performance is your utmost concern prefer hardware encoding should be checked if quality is more your concern and you're not on a 20 series or 16 series graphics card maybe uncheck it but you'll have to do some tests and then estimate bit weight, bit rate with bandwidth tests that will basically run an internet test and see what internet upload speed your computer can support that's fine click next it's going to run this test using some snow we love some snow. I wish I could get away to generate this on my own. I should ask them how to do that. Once your test is complete, it will determine what is the best encoder for recording and streaming that you should use. Hardware encoding being an option, that being NVIDIA's Invink encoder for me on an NVIDIA graphics card. It's almost as if they said that. I said that. I have fiber internet, so it says the max bit rate of six megabits per second is fine for me. It chooses the Twitch server based on auto. It may choose a specific one if you have a bunch that kind of throw errors or don't really work properly but for me it's just like okay you can use whatever and then it gives you the option of recording quality to balance that out with your streaming so i have high quality medium file size it may lower your quality or what have you chooses your resolution all of this is based both on your internet upload and your pc's resources go ahead and hit apply settings okay your main settings are taken care of and if you sign in with a stream account you will be given some panels that you can use for your stream so for example i was given here twitch chat and stream information so i can set my tags my game name my stream name and my twitch chat now these you can actually integrate into obs's layout so i'm gonna go ahead and drag chat over here onto the right so i can always see it and then the stream information i don't really need a whole lot so, but i'm gonna drag it here with my transitions and then i can just cut to my transitions tab once i'm done now if at any point in time you accidentally close these or need to find your docs go to view docs and then you will have your Twitch related things. There's also an activity feed and stats for Twitch available as well that you can enable and drag and drop within your OBS UI. All right, so we're good, but there's nothing here. So next step is to set up your audio devices. Go to settings, audio, and for me, it's all disabled. For you, it might be set to default. So you want, you usually want two things, your desktop sound or your game sound, which comes through your desktop sound, your headphones, your speakers, what have you, and your microphone sound. So for that, we're gonna go to desktop sound. And for me, it's under system. For my go xlr yours might be speakers real tech hd audio what have you uh typically it's whatever is assigned as default in windows explorer but that may be different for you so you can click the little speaker icon in the bottom to find that out alternatively you can right click it go to open sound settings sound control panel 
going to take a moment to load. Thanks, Windows. And then you'll see a list of available devices for you on your system here. So for example, I have all of my Go XLR devices, but I also have my monitor outputs, my headphone outputs and things like that. So find which one is what you're actually using. Maybe play a test sound if you need to, to see which one the volume levels are playing at and choose that in OBS. Same thing for recording devices. You can actually come in here and figure out which microphone is your recording device here. Uh, this one should be my communications device. So we have m my microphone. And then if you specifically have a Go XLR and you have your stream mix, which is everything together. Now with the Go XLR specifically, the handy thing is you actually don't need the desktop audio device. You can disable that and just set the broadcast stream mix as your microphone in OBS here. And you have everything and you just mix it on your Go XLR and you're good to go. If you don't have a Go XLR, then you do need to balance it. So for example, chat mic with your system sound. And then that's pretty much it. I would recommend setting your sample rate to 48 kilohertz and then relaunching OBS as it will require in order to apply the change, uh, as that is what most things are running at these days. Once you have your devices set up, hit apply and you're good to go on that front. I do recommend setting an advanced setting as a bonus tip here. Come over here to advanced color space 709. Don't touch anything else. Maybe set process priority to high if it's not there already, but don't touch anything else. Just set color space to 709, leave everything else alone, hit apply. Don't open that advanced tab again, unless you're watching the rest of my course videos where I explain what those do. All right, now that we're done with output devices, you can come in here and you see the levels bouncing around on your mixer. I generally recommend taking down your uh, microphone down a couple notches just so you don't risk fully clipping in the software. And then typically you want to bring your system sound down so that you're not overloading your voice. I typically go to the minus 20 something range, uh, but this will be a situation where you do lots of test recordings. We'll talk about that in a moment. But typically you want your your system sound in the kind of green bar area here and your microphone sound kind of up here towards the red but not fully all the way on the right of the red that's clipping or peaking and it will distort if your microphone's that far ahead audio's done next is video time to add your video capture devices so first and foremost we need to add our webcam now you have a few different ways of doing this depending on your source type i'm going to go the normal webcam route and then i'm going to add video capture device i'm going to call this webcam I'm going to choose my webcam from the list of available webcams. Mine here is this Avermedia PW510 4K webcam 510 whatever. And then you can choose whether it's device default. That's typically fine for most people. However, if you want specific settings, for example, I know that I want 1920 by 1080 at 5994 NTSC. Good to go there. Now, again, I recommend setting all devices to Rec 709 color space, but defaults are fine for most people. These are just little nerdy extra details. Once you're done here, hit OK. You may notice that my webcam has added a microphone audio device. This will go into your recordings and streamings if you don't mute it out. So I typically mute it and drag the audio all the way down and I will right click it and hit hide so that it's never going to show up ever again. This may depend on your situation, and for mine, the microphone wasn't even working, but depending on your webcam, you don't want an extra layer of really crappy audio overriding your current audio and messing things up. So I want to make a new scene here. I'm going to call this game. And then you need to add your other video capture source. Is this going to be a screen capture or a game capture? You have a couple different sources for that. Display capture for your entire monitor, window capture for specific non-game windows, and then game capture for specific games. I don't have any games running at the moment while recording this tutorial, so I'm just going to enable a simple display capture. That's fine. And I'm going to choose the monitor I wish to capture, which in this case is going to be this monitor because it's my only blank one. And then if it's too big, right click, transform, fit to screen and that is going to fit it exactly to your screen canvas if you do have black bars like i do that means your monitor is not a normal 16 by 9 widescreen aspect ratio there's no real getting around it you can stretch it it's going to look bad so you either crop it or you deal and you fill in the frame with other things there we have two different video captures and you can layer them on top of each other so i can add video capture device if you if you're adding the video capture device you've already used once before then you choose it from the existing list you don't add it a second time click ok and then we make it real small in the corner and we have a super basic stream layout ready to go if you're on a laptop or if your game capture or window capture sources are showing a black screen there are a couple different causes for this and reasons for it i will have a guide linked in the description below that will help you alleviate some of those issues Last but not least, you need to perform some test recordings before you go live. Use that record button, test for your volume level. So get into a game, start chatting while you're playing a game as if you were streaming, record for about a minute, 
and hit stop recording. Test your audio levels in your headphones, mute everything else, just listen to the video. Make sure it all sounds balanced and good and even. Also test your performance, make sure there's no frame drops. If you don't have your stats up here at the top, go to view, docs, and stats. And this will show you rendered frames, dropped frames, and skipped frames. Dropped frames, which typically show up a little bit separately, are due to the network here, right here. That will be due to your internet not keeping up or you having routing issues to your server or something like that. Frames missed due to rendering lag is typically your graphics card doesn't have enough performance to keep up with both gaming and streaming. It doesn't matter how high end of a rig you have. I can encounter this on a Titan RTX and a Threadripper processor or a Ryzen 3600 and a 970 graphics card. You can encounter it on any system. Your OBS can't always balance itself with uh, your game. Uh, alleviations for this are to enable game mode in Windows settings. So hit start, type in game mode. Click turn on game mode. Make sure that's on. Uh, make sure there are no extra overlays like shadow play or the Windows 10 game bar enabled. And then secondly is to run OBS as admin. And you can actually tell it to always run as admin by finding your shortcut in your taskbar here, dragging up, right click, properties, compatibility, and run this program as admin. And then you'll need to approve the UIC prompt every time you run it. But that includes a new GPU priority fix that was introduced last year, which will allow OBS to compete a little bit better for your resources and have an easier time. So do some test recordings, make sure performance is great, make sure quality is looking okay, make sure you sound good, and then you're ready to stream. That's it. It's easy to get up and running fairly simple. There's a lot more advanced stuff you can do with OBS. I have countless videos at this point on the subject on my channel. Links to a couple playlists will be in the description below. Special hint, just go to my channel page and search for specific topics you're looking for. It will probably tell you what you need to know for in terms of finding my videos. Otherwise, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions that you want to see individual videos about in the comment section down below. Uh, go check us out on Floatplane where you can get early access to videos and behind the scenes content. Uh, that's about it. I'll see you later.